The technique I want you to use is a very line heavy, line driven kind of illustration. Instead of using blocks or shapes of color, instead we're going to uh, deal more with lines and a linear style of shading and a linear style of object creation. We're still going to be looking at our picture, trying to find areas of light and dark. Additionally, we want to have a, uh, a direction to the movement. Since I've got something with fur, it's pretty easy to tell which way the lines should be moving. If you've got a more smooth type surface, like if yours is a surface of a car or the pedal or even um, uh, someone's face, the, the skin on the face, you can tell the direction that it's moving simply by the curvature of the surface that you're drawing. The technique we're going to use will involve using the pencil or the pen tool. I'm going to use the pen tool to give me a little more control and stylizing the line. So I've got my pen tool selected. I'm going to set my fill to none and my stroke, we're going to keep it black. I will up the size of my stroke to something we can see. And for now, I'm going to keep it uniform. And I'm just going to draw off one curve line. Clicking once, click and drag, and there's the curve line that I have. Now, what I want to do is I want to be able to draw multiple curve lines across my surface. And then if I did this, I could always click and drag and just draw another one and then click and drag another one, so on and so forth. This will get very, very tedious. Instead, what I would like to do is to draw one starting line and then I'm going to click and draw a finishing line, something like this, and have the computer fill in in between those two. Here's how we're going to do that. To fill in in between, we're going to use the blend tool. I always forget what the name of it is. The blend tool, if you don't see it, it's usually towards the bottom middle of your toolbox. With this tool, you can click on any one object, in this case this line, and the other line, and Illustrator is going to try to blend between those two objects. Right now I've got one line, so in other words it's trying to see what's the, the middle way between this one and that one. If I double click on my tool, this will open up our blend options and this will give us a lot more control over what we want. Right now, usually by default, it's set to smooth color. I'm going to turn on preview and instead of smooth color, let's change it to a specific number of steps. So instead of one in between, Watch what happens as I increase the number. I'm just going to hit my up arrow. You can see more lines are starting to be drawn. This is how we're going to fill in our specific areas. It's going to get a lot better from here. Of course, the more lines you have, the thicker it's going to be, and the fewer lines you have, the less it's going to be. So this is one way you can add shading to your areas simply by having more lines. I'm going to keep it at, let's keep it at eight for now. We'll say, okay. The second thing we're going to do is, rather than having a regular uniform line, I'm going to select my lines again. Let's open up our stroke panel so we can get uh, full control over it. Rather than having a uniform profile, change your profile to one of these custom or predefined different shapes. Now it looks like pin strokes going from one edge to the other. It's going to be blended because we're using the blend tool. If I swap to my white arrow, my direct selection tool, I can click on any one of these points, move it around, and Illustrator is going to blend between those two points. Notice, however, I can't really select anything that's in between. I'm kind of at its mercy as far as what's going on in between it. All I can really control is the starting and the stopping point. Another way you can form a, um, a shading technique is to let one end be a lot closer to the other, almost bringing it, you can bring it to touch the other point. Now I've got a gradation kind of feel. See how when they blend together it get, becomes dark? So it goes from a lighter area to a darker area, simply because I've got one line running into the other line, and both of those lines are getting tapered as they move along. This is the effect and the style that we want to have. If I was to apply this to my picture, you can see how this would give me a nice feathered or a nice uh, fur kind of texture. Additionally, it'll be a great way of adding some, uh, some gradation of color from a lighter area to a darker area. And we're going to blend those two between 
the two there is areas. one thing to note however if I was to select my lines with my black arrow <clears throat> I can click it and I can drag it around and I can rotate it but watch what happens if I try to scale my effect. whenever I scale the effect you can see that there's a glitch that happens all of the lines that are in between it be lose that uh, that profile that's between these two I don't know why this happens, but I do know how to stop it. I'm going to undo everything that I've done. If yours happens this way, if you ever select it with a regular one and try to scale it down, here's how to turn it off. Go into your tool, tools box and try to find the scale tool. This is a tool that's solely dedicated to scaling any object that you need. If you double click on it, it'll bring up our tool options. Here we go. One of the options is to scale stroke effects. If we uncheck it, this will allow us to scale anything that has a stroke effect and that stroke effect won't be affected. So now I can actually make it smaller and you can see it uh, keeps the same profile that we had before. The downside is it also keeps the same width of my, uh, my line that I'm working with. <clears throat> However, if I do need to make it much smaller, I can always change the weight of it up here. So that's one thing to consider. Oh, by the way, here's another thing. Notice how both of these are the same weight. Let's change this one back to three. Well, you can change the weight of your, uh, your scale effects. If I was to select just one edge, I'm gonna use my white arrow, <coughs> choose A, select it. This time I'm gonna let it go from a three point thickness to a one point thickness. That one's selected, change it to one point, Oh, looks like I lost my stroke effect. We'll do this one again. Tell you what, we'll draw another line. <clears throat> we'll let this one be three points. There we go. We'll draw another line. Let this one be one point. Perfect. Now let's blend them together. So I've got my blend tool. Click on one line and the next one. Double click. This will bring up our spacing and we'll change this to specific steps. And since I've got preview turned on, I can increase my number and you can see the difference. What I was trying to show you was this one will go from thicker to thinner and you can also apply the different profiles to each one <coughs> as well. However, you can still see it doesn't work with that one. So be very careful about choosing the thickness of your lines and the thinness of your lines your version of Illustrator may have this bug figured out. I don't know why it's working on mine, but if you keep everything exactly the same or if you just keep your profile a regular profile, it'll work out fine with this one. Now let's start applying this to our illustration by itself. <clears throat> 